today I'm going to talk about QED. And let's see, there was a, you had a question which you asked me before class, and it concerns the notation. We'll be using natural units and relativistic notation. And the P dot X, the inner product of two four vectors here is the dot product of the three vectors minus the product of the four vectors, the product of the zero components. Okay, so let me look at some of these notes. So as I said, natural units means H bar equals C equals one. And there are actually many natural units, but the ones I'm going to use are alpha is E squared over H bar C. That's one over 137 approximately. And I'm taking E as positive, so minus E is charge of electron. Now, the actual quantization of quantum electrodynamics, relativistic quantization, is a long story, and we don't have time to go through all the details. The electromagnetic field will be treated exactly as we have been treating it in the previous couple of weeks, except that we'll, instead of using SI units, we'll use natural units. And instead of using box quantization, well, in the last couple of weeks, we've been sort of sliding between box quantization and then continuum when we go to the sum of the final states. Here, we'll pretty much stay in continuum normalization until one gets to the point of calculating cross sections. And then at that point, you want to remember the relationship between continuum and box quantization so as to interpret some integrals. All right, so the Hamiltonian I'm going to take as H0M plus H0F plus V. Now, H0F is the one we already know about, but if we write it in the continuum form, it's DQK K0 times A dagger of, say, K and R, A of K and R, plus a half. And we sum over the two polarizations. If H0 matter, so we're summing over the two polarizations. These are the annihilation operators for photons. H0 matter, on the other hand, is, again, a sum over the two spins, which I guess I should call by another index. But anyway, I left it as R. Integral DQP, P0, the energy, and then the electron operators, B dagger of P and R, B of P and R. And then the positrons, C dagger of P and R, C of P and R. And then there's a one half associated with each of these, but it comes in with a minus sign. Okay? And so this is one of the things that, one of the reasons why people like supersymmetry, namely that the, if you have the same number of boson modes as fermion modes, then these minus, these minus halves here cancel the plus halves there. Now you see, if you're just dealing with a photon, 
then um, then already it doesn't work because you have two one halves here for a total of one, but you have two one halves for this guy and two one halves for that guy, and you have minus one. So um, so you're out of kilter there. I may have made it wrong, but it seems to be running for out of kilter. All right, what is B? Because as usual in, in in scattering theory, one doesn't need one one these these one half and minus one don't play any role. The the uh, potential this V here is V of zero. V of T is the V in the interaction picture. It's um, an integral over space. It's an IE, something called psi bar of X. Well, X and T since we're integrating Z cubed to X. And then gamma mu, A mu of X, and then psi of X. Now this psi is a four vector, this is a Dirac field. These gamma mu's are Dirac's gamma matrices, the four by four matrices. I'll get to them in a minute. Oh, I think they somehow left into this four vector notation. So let me just write this as xt, xt again. Um, plus v coulomb of t and V coulomb of T is a half integral d cubed x, d cubed y, j0 of x to t, j0 of y of t, divided by the distance between them, x minus y, and then there's a full point. All right, now. So that's a pretty messy sort of thing. This is what happens when you quantize in Coulomb gauge. Um, however, there's a miracle that happens. And the miracle is that when you're doing the scattering theory, you can ignore this term and use a very simple form for what's called photon propagator. So in other words, the role of this term is just to turn the order, the, what is an, is, is to turn the Coulomb gauge photon propagator into something that's called the Feynman propagator, which is um, which has a very nice simple form, and um, and so and and that the fact that that happens is 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 what, well, it's one of the reasons why the theory is Lorentz invariant. All right, so now I, there are a lot of symbols here that I haven't completely defined. These things are creation and annihilation operators for the electron, these for the positron, and these obey anti commutation relations. Let me write it this way sometime. PR of P, PR prime, of P prime, plus, and of course that, you know what the plus means. It's a commutatable with a plus sign in between. Are we okay with that? In other words, it's PR, B, R prime, plus P, R prime, B, R. Anyway, it's zero. And the same thing for those, the other notation, CP of R, CP prime, R prime, commutator, anti-commutator. So these are called anti-commutators. They're sometimes written as, this is the same thing as C of P and R, C of P prime, R prime. So sometimes the anti-commutator is written with squiggly curly brackets. Then P of P and R, P dagger of P prime R prime 
anti-commentator, is delta r, r prime, delta q of t minus t prime. And then the relations for the uh, c's are, are the same. And of course, the a's have uh, similar relations, namely a of k and r, a vanda of k prime, r prime, uh, now, not a plus, most definitely not a plus, just the ordinary commentator or with a minus sign is delta R, R prime, delta Q, of K minus Q. So previously we, we were using K, we were distinguishing between K as a wave vector and H bar K as the momentum of the proton. But since H bar is one, K stands for the momentum also. Um, let me see something else about the gun. There's a, there's a lot of, this may be new material to you, so it'd be good if you, 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 you'd ask questions. And of course, I, as usual, have trouble. But I forgot to bring the rice crackers, but I do have trouble. Still no sign from Daniel. All right, let me write down the photon field in this continuum, almost in this continuum uh, notation. And in fact, let me just write it as a mu of x. Um, one of the advantages of, of doing a relativistic calculation is you don't have to write the damned arrows of the space bar. You don't have to write, so you just write x for all four components. All right, so what is this thing? It's the sum of the polarizations as usual, but in natural units and in continuum quantization, it's the square root of 2 pi cubed, 2 p0. So the The 2p0 is, corresponds to the 2 omega k that we had in box quantization in SI units. The v has, has disappeared because we've gone to continuum quantization. And um, the epsilon 0 is gone because we're not using SI units. And um, the h bar is 1. So that's basically what's happening. The rest of this is then e to the i px, where px is that four vector dot product, um, a polarization vector epsilon mu of p and r, a of p and r, plus e to the minus i px, epsilon mu star of p and r, a dagger of p and r. Okay, so that's the that's the electromagnetic field. And as usual, these we're still in Coulomb gauge, so epsilon with P and R dot P um, vector. Or in fact, dot P vector. Well this is actually a four vector, so this is actually the four vector notation. But epsilon zero of P and R is zero. So these things are effectively three vectors. So this is just the same transversality condition as in uh, as we would have been familiar with. And of course they're orthogonal, namely epsilon of P R dot epsilon of P R prime is Delta R R prime. So I'm guarding his board space a little bit more in detail than usual. And um, we have, as we had before, a sum over R of epsilon I of P and R, epsilon K star. P and R of P and R is delta I J minus P I hat P J hat. 
that's something that we've, that we've been using all along in, um, in order to deal with uh, uh, sums over uh, or averages over initial and final polarizations over the last couple of weeks. All right, so as I said before, um, the, the effect of this VC is just to, you know, to make the, to basically remind us that we're in a relativistically invariant theory, and so the propagator of the photon, which I'll define now, this is written as minus i delta mu nu, so this is one of these one of these several functions, one of which showed up on the homework. This is defined as the vacuum, mean value in the vacuum of the time ordered product of, well, I don't know, I don't know why I would use those vectors. A u of x, a nu of y. Okay. Now, if you work that out, Using this form for the electromagnetic field and these rules, you'd get something that would be kind of a mess. It would, it would have a nice part, and then it would have some ugly parts. The ugly parts get canceled um, in term-by-term -term perturbation theory by the VC. So let me just give you the nice part. So this thing is equal to integral d fourth q over 2 pi to the 4 minus i a to the mu nu over q squared minus i epsilon b e to the i q x minus y. So this is a quadrector product, Minkowski product, and a to mu nu is the thing that everybody loves. It's um, minus 1, 1, 1, 1. This, this is for the 0, 0, and this is 1, 2, 3. Everything else is 0. So the propagator would be very awkward, but in fact, we've got this very simple form. So effectively, whenever, in other words, whenever we see the time order, mean value in the back of the time order product of two field operators, instead of computing it and getting a mess, we just substitute this. And by doing that, we, we have the advantage that in the scattering operator, let me just say that the scattering operator we're going to use will be S of infinity minus infinity. And so this will be time ordered product of an exponential minus i integral. And then for the time integral then, well, we do it will be from minus infinity to plus infinity dx0, but the potential now is d cubed x times this, and we drop the Coulomb term here. Because the Coulomb term already did its work in fixing this. And so this is uh, effectively v minus v0, v minus vc, and so this is the time order product of e to the minus i, and then there's an i, so it's just e to the e integral d fourth x psi bar of x gamma nu a nu of x psi of x. So we're integrating over all of space time. These notes are already online and um, I've extended them, but haven't put the extended form online. I also put online a paper by one of my sons and myself uh, on, um, it's a pedagogical paper about fermion fields. And um, the, it originally, I mean, I originally intended to be pedagogical. Whether it ever wound, whether it wound up being pedagogical, I don't know. But it does at least have a derivation of most of the things that you need for Fermi field. And there are probably parts of it that are good pedagogy, but I don't guarantee that all of it is. Okay, well one of the things that I haven't defined 
so far, but I've just been talking about it, these gamma mutes. These are the magic opera, uh, magic matrices that um, Dirac introduced. And they're defined by a very simple um, commutation relation. And let me check, is that a commutator or an anti-commutator? I wrote it as a commutator, but I'm just wondering, is that really a commutator? No, it's an anti-commutator. Okay, that's really, really serious here. This is supposed to be a plus. Okay, so this is supposed to be a plus. Okay, so what that tells you then is that uh, gamma 1 squared is the identity, gamma 2 squared is the identity, gamma 3 squared is the identity, and that does that. But gamma 0 squared is minus the identity. That's what this thing says. And apart from that, they all anti-commute. Um, but that's all that these gamma matrices need to do. They, um, there aren't any other uh, requirements. So these are four, four by four matrices. You can choose them to be real. But um, usually one uses a complex uh, set of them. Um, now, what you might say, well, what, what is the mathematical reason why we're dealing with those things? Well, it turns out that that if you define J let me use AB now. JAB has minus I over 4. And now this is the commutator. Gamma A, gamma B. So I'll put a minus there. Then um, these operators have the same commutation relations as the generators of the Lorentz group. So A and B run from 0 to 3. And so these are, so to speak, a, a So the generators of Lorentz group, there are basically six operators. Three of them we were talking about last semester, the rotations. The other three are the boosts. So we're all together six operators. And so you see these, this JAB is anti-symmetric. And so it's a basically, um, that's why there's only six of them. OK. Um, and so you can make a representation of the Lorentz group that's finite dimensional. And uh, you write it this way, D of lambda is E Oh, the pinch here is so damn small. I don't know what they're thinking of in this term. Anyway, omega AB, JAB. So this is a this is then a four by four representation of the Lorentz group. And um, you might think that it's unitary, but no, it's not unitary because the Lorentz group is not compact. And uh, because of boosts. So you can boost and you can boost faster and you can even faster, and um, that means that these operators and these matrices are not uh, compact. In other words, some matrix elements can be very big. All right, so that's, um, I think that's all we have time to say about these uh, direct matrices, except um, it's comforting to write down what they are, what one nice choice is. Um, there are basically two nice choices. Um, oh, damn it, I forgot to give you guys your homework. Let me run and get the homework.
Okay. And this is from the file. Let's see. Mr. Astrid. Mr. Johnson. Ms. Lee. Do you see Zhang Zhang? Can you give him this? Would that be? All right. That's that one. And then there's the. Here's yours. 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 And here's. Okay. By the way, I must apologize. There were typos in the homework assignment that I put down for homework six. The. Some of the wave functions were not right that I wrote down. I left out a square root in one case and I had a mistake of a factor of three. I think most of you caught that. But let me let me just say this. If you got points taken off because you use the wrong wave function, namely the ones I wrote down originally, send an email to both the grader and to me and he'll give you back the points. Okay. I meant to tell him that, but he surprised me by I just sent him the homework and the solutions last night and he had them graded by this afternoon. I was planning tonight to send him a message saying don't blame them for my mistake. By the way, I looked up the actual lifetime of the three P state of atomic hydrogen, which was measured in 1970. It was reported in the Fizz Rev article in 1970. And the lifetime was, I think, 5.41 plus or minus 0.18 nanoseconds. And the answer that our calculation gave was 5.98 nanoseconds. So this indeed was an upper bound, not a bad upper bound on the experimental evidence. Okay. So what are these gamma makers? There are two nice choices. There's one nice choice for atomic physics, non-relativistic atomic physics, and there's one nice choice for particle physics. For particle physics, the nice choice is gamma zero is minus I, zero, one, one, zero, where this one is really a two by two operator. So maybe I should write this as one like that, where one is equal to one, zero, zero, one. That's gamma zero. Gamma vector is minus I, zero, sigma vector, minus sigma vector, zero. And if you want, you can make this a free vector of zeros. In any event, that's what the gammas are. And of course, the sigma are the usual Pauli matrices. Now, there's another notation that's used for, I don't know, historical reasons, and it's called beta. And beta is another four by four matrix that is zero, one, one, zero, where again, one is a two by two identity. And then, as you've seen over here, there's this psi bar. You might say, what the hell is psi bar? The psi bar is psi adjoint beta. So it's not quite the same as gamma zero. It's close to gamma. It's I gamma zero. So in other words, it's equal to psi vector. It's I psi, I gamma zero. I gamma zero is 
is paid out. So that's another form for that expression. Okay. Now, so I've defined most of the terms here. The one that I haven't yet defined is the electron-positron field itself. And this is psi of x, let us say, is the sum of the spin states, maybe I'll call it s, integral g cubed p over the square root of 2 pi cubed, or equivalently, 2 pi to the minus, 2 pi to the 3 minus. And then there's something called a spin, ul of p and r, e to the i, p dot x, b of p and r, plus bl of p and r, e to the minus i, p dot x, b, whoops, whoops, whoops. As you'll see, well, some of you may have already done the homework, but the seventh homework assignment is about antiparticles and how they solve the conflict between relativity and quantum mechanics that was mentioned by the Cochran speaker in the Friday Cochran. And so I thought that that would be a nice homework. So in other words, it's a conceptual homework assignment. There's not much, you don't have to do much calculation. You may have to do some thinking, but I hope, well, come see me and shoot me an email or come see me if you have a question. Okay, so this is the annihilation operator from electron, the creation operator for a positron. So the field psi L reduces the charge by one, or it lowers it, moves it in the minus direction. No, no, it doesn't. It moves it in the plus direction by one because it annihilates something that's negatively charged and creates something that's positively charged. So chemists would say this is oxidizing. And the other one, psi dagger then, will have a dagger here to create an electron, annihilate a positron, so that lowers the charge. Now these UL and BL are what are called direct spinners. And for the most part, you don't need to know exactly what they are. You very rarely have to use a spinner by itself. What is almost always involved is a sum over spins of a quadratic expression of spinners. These things are called spin sums. And these would be as follows. Sum over R, and this is R. R, by the way, goes from one to two. Oh, I used an S. All right, I might as well continue using R. R equals one to two. And so U, L, E, R, U bar, L prime of P and R. I'm leaving out the arrow. There's too many trouble going to the arrow all the time. One over two P zero. And now minus I, gamma U, P U, plus M, L, L prime. So you see, if you're summing over the polarizations, as you almost always are, or summing over the spins, in other words, of the electrons, what you get is something that is this characteristic Lorentz invariant expression involving gamma matrices and momenta, and then this mass of the electron. And then similarly, R equals one to two, V, L, P, and R, V bar, L prime, P, and R. This spin sum is one over two P zero, minus I, gamma mu, P mu, and now minus M, L, L prime. All right. So now we know 
we have almost everything we need to know to do all the calculations of quantum electrodynamics. Well, that would be a long time slog, of course. But, let's see, I have a lot of whiteboard space, so I don't need to be so... Oh, sorry. So, we saw over here that we got a very nice photon propagator. This thing is called the photon propagator. Now, I have to write down the electron propagator. Now, there's something tricky in the electron propagator. Minus I delta Lm of x and y, and it's really x minus y. And it's defined as vacuum time ordered product and this is a sort of, I should put a an F for Fermi on this time ordered product. Psi L of x psi M dagger of y. And this thing is defined as theta of x0 minus y0 times the mean value in the vacuum of psi L of x psi dagger M of y. And now the key thing, a minus sign, theta of y0 minus x0 vacuum psi dagger M of y psi L of x vacuum. All right, what is it? Well, it turns out it's not that hard to compute. If, we had, if, this, if this had been a course that was going on a couple more weeks, I could have assigned that as a homework problem. And then what you would have found well, you would have found that in the anti-commutators of various uh, creation and annihilation operators, the electrons and the positrons, these spin sums would have appeared. And you would have eventually found integral g4 q over 2 pi to the 4 minus i minus i gamma mu q mu. That's a little bit of a Space-like separations, they anti-commute at equal times. Well, it's the space-like separation. Anyway, the, um, because of that anti, uh, that extra minus sign, when you switch these around, you compensate by putting a minus sign here. So that's the um, that's that's the way the thing is defined. There's a slightly more useful. Notice that. In the interaction, what you have is not psi dagger but psi bar. You also have a, a beta that's sort of sitting out here like a sore thumb. So what 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 is perhaps a more useful relation is that the mean value in the vacuum of the time order part, and then I'll put an F on this Fermi, psi L of X, psi bar, M of Y vacuum equals integral d4 q over 2 pi to the 4 minus i times 
minus I gamma mu is Q mu plus M Lm e to the i q x minus y and then we divide by the same thing q squared plus m squared minus i x Okay, so this is the fermion propagator or the Dirac propagator or the Dyson propagator or the Feynman propagator In any event, this is the electron propagator And instead of, in, when we were doing uh, the interaction of light with atoms, we used S of t and zero. Instead, we're going to use <coughs> S of infinity minus infinity. And I guess I've already defined what that is. That's this thing over here. All right, well, we're now ready to start Compton scattering. Um, So let me find my notes on that, and we'll see how far we get. I don't think we, we certainly can't finish the calculation today. But we can get started with it, and we can, we can see why it is that this minus sign appears. So we'll see that proof. So what we're thinking of then there's a process here where an electron of momentum P plus a photon of momentum K goes to another electron plus a photon, but now P prime plus K prime. And of course we expect that the four momenta are conserved, so we expect that P plus K, we expect that P plus K is this is called Compton scattering. And I can Compton did it with X rays or electrons. Okay. Um, so what we're looking at then is E prime, K prime, and I'll just call this S or all the first time I'll write it as S infinity minus infinity. And of course, we're not going to do it exactly. We're doing it um, to lowest order. And to lowest order, it will be just e squared over 2 time order product integral d fourth x. I should have started it up there. Well, d fourth y. Maybe I'll just go following the notes here. This would be psi bar of x, gamma mu, a mu of x, psi bar of y, gamma mu, a mu of x. So, oh, oh, that's not x, that's supposed to be y. That's the expression. Now, what's being time ordered, of course, here is that this ex this thing over here, psi bar, gamma mu, a mu, where's the sign? What kind of sign? You guys, you need to call me on these things. A mu of x, psi of x. I'm psi bar of y, gamma mu, a, gamma mu, a mu of y, psi of y. Let me pause then uh, the front office to see what I asked them to check whether they say this room will not be available 3 30 on Wednesday, but room five is available. On the other hand, um, 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 I'm wondering whether this room is available, say, later in the day. Are you guys available at 4 or 4.30 or 5 or 5.30? Really, I'm better. Hi, Sandra? 
Yeah, hi. Do you guys know about the, whether this moon is available later in the day on Wednesday? So it's being used. It's, so we're saying it's, it's, it's in use not only at 3.30, but also at 4, 4.30, 5, 5.30. So if, if the best thing is then just 3.30 in room 5. Okay, thank you. All right, so it's 3.30 room 5 for Wednesday's class. All right. So as I said before, the time ordering is with respect to this whole block, sidebar, this and that. And by the way, there's a very nice notation. The fine minute do several nice notations. Avenue, A mu. X he just calls A slash X and gamma mu Q mu is just Q slash. So slash is um well it's defined by these anything slash you know the form of the Lorenzo variant form of the gamma's. Okay, now the thing to so the first thing to appreciate as you look at this is that X and Y are playing, obviously, equivalent symmetric roles. So we don't really need to compute the thing if this happens at X, if A happens at X, and B happens at Y, then you can also have B happening at X and A happening at Y. You don't have to compute both of them. You just compute one of them and cancel this two. That's the first observation, and that's really an important observation. And that's true in general of um, not simply QED, but all of this um, scattering formalism. <clears throat> what happens is you'll always get an n factorial here, but x1 through xn are symmetrically placed equivalent roles, and so you can just single out one particular choice and cancel the n factorial. All right, so if we do that, then let us in fact say that the that the vertex X will be the one that absorbs the another that emits. So we'll say X emits a final electron. And Y is is the vertex that absorbs initial electrons. We do that then, what we get is P prime K prime S PK is now E squared P prime K prime integral D cross X D cross Y. And now we can um, write the time ordering explicitly. So for the case X0 minus Y0, now, the, we're saying then that the field, <clears throat> that the vertex X is the one that emits the electron. Well, the only operator that emits the, can emit the electron is this psi bar of X, because psi of X contains the annihilation operator of an electron, but psi bar contains the creation operator. So psi can't play a role in, in this activity. And similarly, over here, the thing that's going to annihilate the initial electron is going to be the annihilation operator in psi. And um, maybe you should swing the thing around a bit so I can just show. So if we're going to use, when the creation operator occurs, the psi bar acts, we're going to have a u bar here, p dagger equal to minus i p prime dot x, and when psi of y acts, we're going to have ul of p, b of p and r, and e to the i, p dot y. So those things are going to um, uh, occur. So, so I'm going to 
going to drop the rest of the field on this one in UBAR of E-prime R-prime, E-dagger of E-prime R-prime, E minus I E-prime dot X, gamma mu A mu of X, psi of X times psi bar of Y, gamma mu A mu of Y. And then from this, I'm just going to keep UPR from the psi of Y, E to the I P Y, B of P and R. But then we have plus theta of Y0 minus X0. And now we have all of this stuff is to the left. And so we have, by the time ordering, psi bar of y, gamma nu, a nu of y. And now, psi of y gives us the spinner, e v i p y, p of p and r. And then e bar of p prime r prime, the dagger of P prime R prime E minus I P prime dot X gamma mu A mu of X psi of X PK and those P runs. Okay, so that's the expression. Um, And um, you can see that why it is then that people were happy when Feynman introduced his rules. Um, I'll put those rules on the web page. Um, but I, I, I think instead of telling you the rules and following them, we'll discover the rules as we go along here. We, 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 in fact, we're about to discover uh, one of the rules right now. All right, now how does, um, how does this act? Well, in the top line, the creation operator here is just in the position to cancel this P prime. And the annihilation operator over here stands to the right, and it can act directly on this P. But on the second line, we have all sorts of um, obstacles. Um, we can take this B dagger and move it through all the way to the left. Then it crosses two fermionic um, operators. And that's two minus signs, which of course is a plus sign. So there's no problem there. But then, all right, so let me get this straight. Right. But then we've got this guy, this annihilation operator, we have to move all the way to the right. And we've already moved the creation operator to the left, so moving this annihilation operator to the right, it only encounters the sign. So it's one minus sign. So altogether, the three minus signs, when the creation, the electron creation annihilation operators act in the second term. So what we get is E squared K prime integral D four of X D four of Y theta of X zero minus Y zero and now U bar of E prime R prime E minus I E prime dot X gamma U and U of X. So I bar of y and mu e mu of y mu of p and r e to i p y. And then we have minus theta of y zero minus. 
minus x0. And this minus is the minus that occurred over here in the definition of the fermionic propagator. Why don't you turn this around so that you can see. So that minus is this minus. This minus is the cause of it. Now what we have is, so I borrow y, gamma nu, a nu of y, u of p and r, dvi of py, u bar of p prime, r prime, u minus i of p prime dot x, gamma nu, a nu of x, psi of x, k. Three parentheses. Okay. All right. Now let's maybe look at this a little bit. If we put in indices, let's call this an L and this an M. Then you see what we've got here is that this would be Mn and this would be Un. And this L would be, say, KL and K there. We put in all the indices. And then over here, I want the M on this again. And so this would be Mn. I guess this would be an O. And then I want this to be an L. So this is, I guess, KL. And that's a K. All right. So now I've got all the indices. And the only operators we have now are the A here, the A nu and the A nu, and the psi and the psi bar of X and Y. Now, the psi and the psi bar only worry about each other. They don't worry about the numbers or the photon field. And so what we have here is, from the point of view of the Fermi fields, we just have basically the vacuum on the left, the vacuum on the right. So we have that coming, the time-ordered product, the fermionic time-ordered product, that is to say the extra minus on, of psi L, psi M dagger, psi M bar. Let's use this form of it. And so the way, what it boils down to then is this. E squared, um, d4 of x, d4 of y, d4 of q, I'm now putting in, I'm now using this formula for the um, electron propagator. Sorry, I want the electron positron propagator. d4 of x over 2 pi to the 4, d4 of q. Then these factors, these common factors, e to the minus i p prime dot x plus i p dot y, and then a k prime. And now what do we have? Well, the way I wrote it, I got it this way. u bar of p prime r prime gamma mu a mu of x. Um, minus i minus i gamma mu q mu plus m e to the i q x minus y gamma nu, a nu, of y, u, of pr, k, we have over q squared plus m squared minus i epsilon, and 
I left out the time ordering because it's not really going to play a role anymore. Um, now let's try to get the indices right. I wrote it this way so that, um, remember, this is a 4 by 4 matrix. And in fact, what matrix is it? Well, it's the LN matrix element. And so, so as we see, the, 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 the top line is adequately represented. The question is, now is the bottom line adequately represented? And um, I think it is, because you see we have the side bar, gamma mu, a mu of x, psi L of x, and then uh, psi bar m, gamma nu, a nu, and then finally the u over here. Okay. So the ordering that we've got here is in fact the same ordering that comes out of this expression. So this is, is entirely the correct form. Okay, now, you may know that we now only have the photons. And over the last couple of weeks, you guys have become experts on the photons and how they act on the initial final state. Oh, something that I really forgot to emphasize is that in, in the um, treatment of light interacting with matter, we often had the H0 matter Hamiltonians acting on the initial and final states. And sometimes we even had the photon H0F acting on the initial and final states. But um, it's generally more convenient to have that act on, act, act inwardly on the photon operator, on the, uh, yeah, the photon field operator, and put into it into the interaction picture. Here what we're doing is always having all of the H0F and H0M acting inwardly on the um, photon field operator and the electron positron field operator and turning them into the interaction picture. And that's what gives, um, that's, what, that's why you have a time variable in here. This is a four vector product here, and that's why over here, you have the time variable here in this four vector uh, there. So everything went into the interaction picture. My memory is that uh, Dyson, who's still alive, is the person who identified, uh, well, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, never mind the history. Let's just look at this. Now, these photons, the, the you have an annihilation operator and a creation operator for photons in, in field A nu of X and in field A nu of Y. So there are two possibilities. A nu of X can annihilate the initial photon or it can create the final photon. And similarly, A nu of Y can annihilate the initial photon or create the final photon. And they have, it's, it's one or the other. If this one creates the final photon, this one annihilates the initial photon. If this one annihilates the initial photon, this one creates the final photon. I hope I got that right. In any event, it gives you two different processes, which are represented by two different diagrams. And these final diagrams then are the following. This P prime. This P. The initial photon comes in like that and goes out like that. So that's diagram one. And remember, we chose to have x to be here, so this is y. x we chose to be the, the vertex that emits the final electron. The other diagram looks like this. But now, this one emits the final photon, and this one absorbs the initial photon. And these, uh, this is according to which field does it there. So these diagrams, normally one doesn't write X and Y, but I think for all purposes it's better to do so. 
These diagrams then just indicate our, our representations of different terms in this formula for the scattering amplitude. All right, let me get a drink. And um, I'm now almost out of notes. Q. 
And bingo, you're done with one overall four-dimensional delta function which represents energy momentum conservation. And then two amplitudes, one amplitude for the upper choice of what the photon operators do, and one amplitude for the lower choice of what the photon operators do. So that's basically it. And um, uh, so, uh, shall I try to do the upper one, let's say? Um, well, let's look at the d fourth x integration. The d fourth x integration, you have minus i p prime. Or no, never mind the i. You have p prime with a minus, k prime with a minus, q with a plus, and that's it. So that's going to give us. And what is this? This is delta 6 plus 4 is 10. It's 2 pi to the 10. But then we have delta of Q minus K prime minus P prime. So that's delta 4 of Q minus K prime minus P prime. By the way, check my arithmetic, all right? I'm doing this without notes. Then the d fourth y integration gives us a p minus q plus k. p minus q plus k. This is for the upper term. So since we're going to have two of these, I'm going to write a big parenthesis. But now, those two pi's kicked out, each of them are two pi to the fourth. So this is two pi to the eighth. And the uh, creation and annihilation operators mean we have nothing left but the vacuum, and the vacuum, vacuum matrix element is one. So we have no more quantum mechanics at all. We've got rid of the phase factors. We have uh, all the time we're going to have. Um, well, let's let's just do the terms separately. Square root of two k zero, two k zero prime. Um, I'll just do the top one, and then we can we can quit. I'll do the rest of it tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, 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 3.30, room 5. So we're going to have U bar prime, gamma mu, epsilon, star, and you can use the real polarization vectors if you want, prime mu. Then we have minus i, minus i, gamma mu, q mu, plus m. And now we can suppress the indices because this is just a matrix multiplication times gamma upper nu, epsilon nu, u, that's it. Except for the denominator, which is, so I'll just drive to the bottom, divide by q squared plus m squared. Okay, so that's that term. To do the other term, I guess, you want me to do the other terms? No. All right, one no. It's late. Is that right? All right, we'll do the other term next time. In any event, you can see that when you do the d fourth q integration, you just replace q by k prime plus p prime or p plus k. So this turns into p plus k. So in fact, I can do the Q integration and get rid of this.
this guy. And this is just P plus K. So now everything, now the whole thing is done for one term. You do the analogous operations on, with the bottom choice, you get something like that, but a different value of Q. And uh, so this, this one, this diagram, and this diagram or something else. So we'll finish that uh, on Wednesday, and I may be able to, to sketch uh, what happens in uh, some other processes, such, to, such as E plus E minus goes to two photons. Or electron electron scattering. <laughs>